In fact, Graydon uh, technically ran away from home. Graydon will do anything for Valentine's Day? I think he will. So my big elaborate plan for Valentine's Day currently is like nothing. <laughs> I have nothing. We're the Jonases. We're a family of 10 plus a few more. I'm the mom PJ with my husband Jim, our daughter Brett, our sons Coulter, Emery, Fletcher, Graydon, and Hewitt, and our daughters Indigo and Jade. We have our hands full with raising dairy goats on our farm, making goat milk soaps and other products from their milk, all while homeschooling and homesteading happily. We love our life and sharing how we live on the other side of the fence. Hey everybody, welcome to the replay. It is Emery and Landon out here, and Landon is going to record the birth. Here you go. There you go, yeah. Oh, hi. I'm going to do the beef way, and we're about to see the great goat, and the baby goat, and the baby deer, and this is the baby, and this is the baby, that's the baby, and this is the baby. siblings um, who have Valentine's. I think probably Emery is gonna plan the best Valentine's Day. He's very good at like making a bunch of things and he's very good at showing that he cares for people. Emery, straight up. I think Emery will probably have the best Valentine's just because he has enough planning ahead with the trying to be spontaneous and kind of romantic, so I think he's gonna have the best one. Probably Mason, he can be really good at like the chocolate strawberries and he makes all these like delicious foods that just, they're so good. But Emery is really a romantic, so Emery will probably plan the most romantic Valentine's Day, but Mason, I mean, you can't really beat food, so. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what it's gonna be, but he's definitely got something planned. So Emery and I were two of the first kids, well, we were the, the, first, the two. first two kids to move out. So I moved out uh, when I got married, and then Emery bought his own house at auction yep. uh, probably a year or two later. It wasn't that much longer. It really wasn't. You got married in 2018. Sorry. <laughs> I was 16. That's, or no, I was 18. <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking. And I bought mine in 2019, so a year, probably a year and a half later. So it was just a huge adjustment for our family as we went from having eight kids at home to all of a sudden having them all just start leaving all at the same time. Yeah, because once I bought my place, it kind of opened up the floodgates to, okay, we can move out. Coulter already had uh, land at this point, um, but he hadn't built on it or moved out yet. So he started building. Graydon and Fletcher both bought houses a year and a half after I bought a house. So within like three years, we went from having all of us in the house to pretty much three of us in the house. And it was a very quick and very different time. So three of the kids still live at home, the youngest son, Hewitt, and the two youngest girls, Indigo and Jade. And because when we built this house, everybody still lived at home, now the three youngest each have their own bedrooms. Which nobody's... Which was like, never part of the plan. Yeah. I was never, never a fan of the whole have your own bedroom thing. But 
that's where we're at, so that's where they're at. And they are normal teenage disaster bedrooms, just like you see in all the movies and sitcoms, and it's absolutely horrendous what they've done to these things. Today we're going to have some people come out and see the puppies. Um, they're going to meet them to see which puppy they want. Um, sometimes people like to do this before they purchase one. You know, it's kind of nice for them to come out and look at them, get to play with them, see their personalities. Um, I mean, they're still puppies, so there's a lot to, they have a lot of growing to do. Um, but, yeah, we just have them come out and um, either that or they do a video, a Zoom chat if they can't make it out here um, to meet the puppies, see how they interact with the other puppies, with people and all that fun stuff. Can you tell their personalities? Chewy is a little more laid back compared to like Obi-Wan who just loves your attention. And it's his bachelor party, he's not allowed to know anything. Hey, he said of working it. Yeah, we're talking about it. So like, what are you doing for your bachelor party? Or for the bachelor party? Right, yeah, no, no, that'd be it for that. We don't know. That's my job. Oh, uh, so he doesn't know anything about it. He doesn't it. know anything. I have literally no clue. Okay, so, so tell us that then. He can't be here. <laughs> <laughs> no, what tell we just said. Can't, tell us about how he can't be here. I just said it. So the question is, <laughs> what are we doing for the bachelor party? And the answer is, Samuel? I can't tell you, because Graydon's here, and right. he doesn't get to know anything. Nope. I have to go in blind. Because I totally know what we're doing exactly to the minute of all day. Millisecond. No, minute. Okay, I'm working on it. I still got a month or so. Okay. Plan down to the millisecond. Definitely. All right. Emery and Ashton, share your love story in 30 seconds or less. I'm not great at the stories. He's better at it. Uh... I knew I liked Ashton. She wasn't sure about if she liked me. Then she decided she liked me, so then we started dating. Yeah. Well, we liked each other. Then we liked each other less. She got a boyfriend. I was alone. She dumped the boyfriend. Another guy was interested. I gave him a bloody nose. And then we're together. <laughs> I liked him before he liked me, I think. Or at least before he was aware he had feelings at all, like in general. <laughs> my, my siblings have a habit of calling me emotionally constipated. Um, they're not that far off. Mason and I met when I was 10 years old at his grandfather's funeral. He impressed my mom so much that she told me that week that I could marry him someday. And he is the only person that she has ever said that about for any of her children. But um, we had one beautiful little girl out of yeah. One of the reasons that I let Landon uh, narrate the video was one, because uh, I needed to do the birth. And so uh, I was like, well, might as well, you know, give Landon the camera. What's the worst that happens? Afterwards, I don't have to post it, you know, if it's, if it's terrible. Um, but it was pretty cute, so we ended up posting it. Um, but that was one of the reasons. Number uh, two is that I love to be able to help them grow and help um, my nephews learn new things. Um, I was honestly very surprised by how much he'd already picked up. Um, you know, he took the camera right away and was like, Hi, why don't you do this way? Which I know we say every time in every video, um, but I was pretty shocked that he picked it up because I didn't tell him to say that or anything. He just did it right off the bat. So that was really cute. Those are pretty much the only reasons that I decided to let him do the video, but uh, in the end, I'm pretty glad that I did. I say go for it. Yeah, I say go for it and, and we get all the babies out. When he is it's really, very cool. <laughs> um, I have kind of this feeling that Jade might get asked to be somebody's Valentine. Not sure, but I think there's a good chance that it'll happen. Yes, I definitely think that Jade might be asked to be someone's Valentine, but me definitely not. So do you think you will be anyone's Valentine? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> there's a little bit of gray area, but I'm kind of hoping not. <laughs> not. I'm, I'm kind of hoping to not be anybody's Valentine's Day, but Valentine. But it, it might happen. We'll see.
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you think uh, culture will do anything for Valentine's Day? Probably, and we'll probably plan it together for the most part. I don't know if there's anything behind the scenes, but from all I know, we're planning it together. Great, and we'll do anything for Valentine's Day? I think you will, even if it is last minute. Um, I know we're both really busy, but I think you'll have something, whether it's just like get together or eat dinner. Neither of us are huge on gifts, so that makes it easy. Um, I'm big, I'm a big quality time person, so if we just go out to dinner, or I go over to his house and we have dinner, or do some activity, that'd be fine. You know what, if it just gets me chocolate, I'll be fine. Chocolate, maybe some flowers. All right, so my big elaborate plan for Valentine's Day currently is like nothing. <laughs> I have nothing. I know she likes chocolate, I'm definitely getting her chocolate. After that, I haven't got a clue. So it's still in the works, I guess. And I will pull something together, at least dinner, at the, at the minimum. But I have no, no plans right now. I mean, it's a nice day to be like, I really appreciate you, but you can always do that through like the whole year too. Like, you don't have to do it every, like, something like every day, but you get what I mean. <laughs> Mason likes to pretend that he's not gonna do anything for Valentine's Day and then go all out which always puts me in the uncomfortable position of him saying he's not gonna do anything, so then I don't do anything, and then he does something, <laughs> and I look like a loser. <laughs> Hi, bud. So, do I think I'll be anyone's Valentine's Day? Um, not, not really. Um, I, I don't have a great <laughs> experience with it. The last one, two Valentine's ago, I, ended up getting, breaking my nose on a trash can, so. So yeah, my siblings got to create a whole story of, I asked the trash can out and she said no, <laughs> pretty harshly. <laughs> so Valentine's Day here is usually another day on the farm. I actually have nothing planned for my wife of 27 years. It's been a while since we've done anything to celebrate holidays like that. <laughs> and so by process of elimination, that means five of them all have their own homes. And that happened really fast. It was not a slow process that moving out. I mean, Brett was. Brett, Brett got married and, and got her own place first. Right. But then the four boys moved out. Boom, boom, boom. It was... It was really fast. It was really, it was hard on a lot of us. Yeah, and that was during the pandemic because they got really tired of all being here. <laughs> Get me out! <laughs> so they're like, hey look, there's a house for sale. I'm moving into it. Yeah. Um, what was the best and the worst part about moving out? Well, what instantly popped into my head was playing Billy Joel as I tore out of the driveway in the Beast a re really late evening. The best part was not having to clean up after my siblings anymore. Honestly, what came to mind for me, though, was if you've ever seen Cars, when uh, Lightning McQueen just goes, Freedom! California, here I come! Yeah, that's, that's pretty much for me. Best part of moving out? Silence. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to move out. Uh, yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't a matter of like, because yeah, like we said, we were just looking at houses, and I had wanted to move out before I was 18, before then. Yeah, but pretty much we're the two that have the claim, you know, like I was the yeah, first guy to move out. Yeah, he was the first guy to move out. I was the youngest. It's yeah, hard to beat so. 17. Can't beat 17 now because you too old, buddy. Uh, and so it's in stone. Youngest Jonas boy to move out. In fact, Graydon uh, technically ran away from home. Why are you doing the bachelor party? Why am I? Why did you decide to do that? Why did I decide to do the bachelor party? Is it asking the bachelor party or the thing I'm doing for the bachelor party? I think it was supposed to be. To, like, well, I figured agreeing to be his best man was also agreeing to do the bachelor party. And I mean, when someone asked you to be the best man, you were you supposed to say no? Like. Yeah, you say yes. Yeah, you say yes. <laughs> it's like, oh, I didn't think we were that close, but yeah, sure. <laughs> That's sad of you. <laughs> I do it because I signed up to do this. It's, it's expected. I knew what I was signing up to do. Right. Um, 
Yeah, yeah Graham's my best friend, and so, you know, I was, I knew eventually I would be doing this. I didn't know, but I was pretty sure that I would be doing this eventually. So, you know, I've... With all these years of planning. I've had all these years to plan, you know. This is a, it's a big thing for him, mostly, but, you know. <laughs> Um, we are going to Nanya. Ah, love that place. Yeah. Ashton and I met through the business. She came to work for us, and I was actually the first person that she met. And our first interaction went a little something like, um, where can I find your mom? I said, up oh, there. So then we uh, were friends for a while, then we started dating, and then got engaged, and now we're going to be married. So we met at cross country practice. I had been running for multiple years. Uh, she started out and over a little while we started texting a bunch. We um, got to know each other really well throughout that. That kind of had a moment where it, was, it ended. It wasn't super dramatic, but we just kind of stopped talking to each other. Because we were what, 12? We were probably 14 by the time we kind of stopped. Yeah, and then started talking again through cross country again two years, three years later and got to where we're at now. We met over a decade ago, started dating uh, back in 2020, and then, yeah, dated for a year and some on, and then got engaged and got married. Yeah, but he asked me out like two weeks before I was supposed to go back to school because I was on Christmas break. So he asked me out the day after Christmas, and we went out on a date, which was really good. It was really awkward, but it was good. And then we came back and we watched. We did a Shrek marathon with the whole family. And so everybody's there and we're sitting next to each other. We're just kind of awkward and like, we didn't hold hands for the first movie. <laughs> but then all the siblings were like looking over the side and they were like taking sneaky pictures. So I have at least like four or five pictures on my phone of just me and Coulter just sitting there like barely holding hands. <laughs> My first impression of Mason was at his grandfather's funeral and he impressed my mom so much that she told me that week that I could marry him someday. And he is the only person that she has ever said that about for any of her children. And I didn't see him again for eight years. And eight years later, he comes back down to visit his grandma and we ended up hiring him and we flirted hardcore for a couple of months and then I got scared and ran away and ignored him for a whole year which was difficult because he was basically living here <laughs> and uh, after a year of ignoring him we were in the barn during kidding season in the middle of the night shifts and he kept crashing mine and Emery's goat shifts and he started bringing me Taco Bell he knew my favorite order and he would bring us Taco Bell in the middle of the night and I started thinking we could be friends again. And a few months of being friends, uh, we started talking again and then started dating. And a month after that, we were engaged. And six months after that, we were married. So it seemed really fast to a lot of people, um, but we had known each other. We'd been working here for what, two and a half years? This will be my eighth year this year, so. So, we. We've been married five, so yeah, two and a half. Yeah, we'd been working together for a while, so we knew him pretty well at that point. They're so so good. They're already pretty heavy. <laughs> what are you heading towards, Jimmy? Chewy or Anna? Chewy or Obi Wan? I'm gonna go Chewy. Are you? <laughs> All right. So when we decide which puppy gets to go to which family, um, they either do a Zoom call or if they're close enough, they'll they'll come to the farm. And basically, we ask what they're looking for. If we're looking for like a family dog, we try to pick ones that are more laid back and chill and not going to like, if they have children, not going to knock them over and stuff like that. Um, if they want a farm dog, we just try to 
base it off that they're puppies, so we can only tell so much. A lot of people, the ones that come to the farm or do Zoom calls, they're like, they're already set on a puppy or two puppies, and then they're like, watch them on the video or see them in person, and then they finally choose which one they like. The hardest part about matching them, well, they're puppies, so you can only tell so much. So like, depending on what time of day they come, they could be really sleepy, and not really active, or they're super active. Um, so like, it depends on what time they come, and like, that kind of come, plays into factor. Of, or if they come right after they've gotten their shots, where they're kind of tired and zonked out and stuff like that. That's that's kind of difficult. And we do tell them if that happens, we'll tell them like, hey, they got their shots today. They might not be as active as they were normally are. I do, it, it's kind of fun to see them uh, pick their puppy. Um, I do like seeing them when they come and pick up their puppy as well. Um, when they finally get to go home, it's nice to see that who they're going with instead of just like the puppy leaving kind of thing. It's nice to see them go to good families and to hear that they have other dogs or what they're going to do. Like some are gonna be for service dogs. So like, I think that's pretty cool. In fact, Graydon, uh, technically ran away from home. Because he was only 17? Because he moved out before he was 18. Uh, With our permission. But yes. We could just say we kicked him out before he was 18. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that sounds that sounds better. But though it, it was difficult when they left because the whole family dynamic shifted really quickly before we were really able to prepare for that. Yes, it was strange having most of the family move out. As annoying as siblings can be, it's very used to having everybody be there. And we're now in a different stage in all of our lives where we're growing up, we're doing different things. And so we're not around each other as much as we used to be. And being part of the younger group, it's weird for me still a little bit. I've gotten a lot more used to it, but it's still, I'm like, I would, I would love to just like go hang out with all of them. and just do something outside or inside like we used to. But we still see them every Thursday on Fam Jam, as well as at work, so like, still get to spend time with them, but not as much as we used to. Or is it strange when your siblings moved out? <laughs> uh, strange is one word for it. We're youngest children, so it was like, uh, it was very dramatic. It was like one of those sad, like, teenage movies where like all the joy had left the house. Yeah. It was, it was, um, it was, it was really weird for us because we were just so used to like tagging along and I mean we all had leadership obviously but we kind of just like just helped them. We were always the side character and then it was like whoa suddenly suddenly they we're the only ones in the house we have to figure out what we actually are going to do. It was really right. weird. Now we've gotten used to it because it's been three years, but at the beginning it was like we were lost. I mean, we, we, lost. we didn't know what to do. <laughs> we were like, what is happening? And we still see them every single day at work. But it was very much different when they didn't hang out here after work. Yeah. It wasn't really part of the whole parenting plan. Like, you don't, as a parent, you don't plan for how do you have your child move out. Right, you just know that they will. You, know that they <laughs> you just will know eventually. that you want them to. Right. And you certainly don't necessarily have the forethought to think how that's going to affect the ones that are still there. So the three that are here, you know, all of a sudden lost the constant companionship of some of their closest friends. Yeah, because I mean, they'd all been here. They've all always entertained each other, played with each other, done, you know, everything together. And then all of a sudden, they started driving, they started moving out, they started doing all of these things, and the ones that, the younger ones were still here, and it wasn't something that, um, you know how parents talk about having an empty nest, right, feeling the empty nest that everybody's gone? Well, I didn't realize my younger kids were gonna feel that way, because it was really like they, they were in many ways abandoned, and we just hadn't ever prepared them for that, because it wasn't something we had ever thought about happening. Right, well, and for, for most of the people watching this, I imagine having three teenagers at home is still... It's not an empty nest. <laughs> that's, that's still quite a bit, actually, having three teenagers at home. Um, but it was a very 
big change in the dynamic, and that I think was that was what we yeah. felt. But we're surviving it. Yeah. We're almost we're almost on the other end. Yes, and neither of us is completely gray yet. How did your Valentine's Day go? Valentine's Day was great. Yeah, I think we we went to. Bella Roma, which is an Italian restaurant that we went to last Valentine's Day, so we're thinking about making it a tradition now. We went and got um, like slushies from a gas station, and then went back home and watched The Mummy because he had never seen it before. So yep. it was really good. I think it went fantastically. It went, it went really oh, well. I should start it now. Yeah, I liked it. <laughs> I think Valentine's Day was a smashing success. Oh my gosh. I did a wonderful job. Yeah. He made um, roses out of chocolate. So that was pretty cool. Valentine's Day is like Valentine's Day, but it's just for the girls. And we there's a lot of different things that you can do, but it's, it's just for the girls. Boys are not allowed. <laughs> So Katie came to me and asked uh, if I wanted to do Valentine's Day. Apparently she started it in college with her friends and she said, well, I really, you know, I miss doing it. I want to do it again. So we did it with um, my sisters and the girlfriends slash spouses slash fiancés. We still call them the girlfriends, <laughs> but like I, they're all engaged now, so or married. <laughs> um, and Kylie, of course, and mom. So um, we went over to Ashton's house and we watched a rom-com and we had chocolate chip pancakes and Ashton made Lots dip. Of whipped cream and <laughs> strawberries and yes. everything. So it was awesome. You tell me. It was good. It was just right. We uh, got dressed up a little bit and then mm -hmm. went to Flip Daddy's and had some good food and then Went back to his house and watched a movie. Yeah. And ate chocolate. We ate chocolate. She was found outside with a baby goat head sticking out of her. Okay, we're in for some trouble it's about here. About 30 hours, I think. Yeah.